Good morning. This is the uh, small um, small business committee uh, for the city of Kansas City. My name is Teresa Lohr. I'm the chairman. Uh, I'm also the second district at large council member, um, and I'd like to introduce the rest of our members of the committee. Hi, I'm the vice chair of the committee, Heather Hall, and your first district in district council person. I'm Jermaine Reed. I'm a member of city council third district, and I'm a member of the committee. And clerk, Madam Clerk, Raquel Adams, City Clerk's Office. Jim Brady from the Law Department. You work here? You <laughs> like you won't yeah. say anything. <laughs> I don't want to admit to it. Well, we're meeting today to talk about um, uh, a couple of exciting things. Uh, we are going to begin our, uh, our uh, agenda a little uh, different than how it's printed. Uh, we ha is that right? We've got the uh, We Create Report presentation by uh, Kate Hodel of um, Kansas City Source Link. Right? Yes, okay. absolutely. <laughs> Great. Okay, well, welcome to the committee. We're looking forward to um, what you have to tell us today. So please go right ahead. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be telling you about kind of what's going on in entrepreneurship in Kansas City. I'm going to start with sort of the big picture, and then, of course, Carmen and these Hi. guys are going to sort of drill down to what's happening on the ground, which is way more exciting. So I'm going to kind of <laughs> do mine quickly. Rick, you're going to have to tell me how to advance the slides because I don't. The yeah. arrows, left yeah. and right arrows. Okay, great. Um, so. What was the problem? We always start with entrepreneurs. What's the problem we're trying to solve? And the problem in Kansas City was jobs. You know, we were ranking 2012 to 2013. We were one of the lowest among our peer cities in terms of job growth. And so how do you grow jobs? Well, who creates jobs? I'm going to click the next slide. It's young and new firms. The Kauffman Foundation research for the last 10 years has been pretty consistent in telling us that net new jobs come from these young, uh, and growing firms, and that actually there's a, a significant amount of job loss from the existing firms. So we're really interested in how can we help these young new firms get started, get on their feet, and grow. Um, if you want to click, and so um, you will all remember that um, the Greater Kansas City Chamber of Commerce and many other organizations came together and put a big bold statement out there and said, "Let's make Kansas City America's most entrepreneurial city." Let's do this thing. Um, and, and so um, we did. And one of the things that I think is important to remember is when we talk about being an entrepreneurial city, it is not just about tech entrepreneurs. And the folks you're going to hear from later today are by and large not that, you know, techie um, innovation led. There, uh, there are a wide number of different kinds of entrepreneurs that make up the Kansas City economy. And if you can see from the slides, um, they're all important to our economic health and vitality. And so that's why we at SourceLink and, and, and when we're looking at what, how do we make Kansas City America's most entrepreneurial city, we're looking at all those different kinds of entrepreneurs from the micro enterprise and the Main Street entrepreneur all the way to that innovation led entrepreneur and then that second stage entrepreneur. So we, we sort of cast a big, um, big bucket. So uh, when we started looking at making uh, Kansas City America's most entrepreneurial city, you will remember there were a number of studies. Um, you guys did a study. Um, the Kauffman Foundation did a couple of studies. I think Mark did a study. And out of that came uh, six, what we called the six imperatives. What were six things we could really start to work on to move the needle? And they were connected resources, awareness, network capital, the pipeline of ideas, STEM talent, and corporate engagement. Thank you, Vanna. Yeah. So the big question is, are we there yet? And the answer is, um, we're making progress. And so one of the things we saw from the time that the Big Five initiative was, was announced, any number of new programs and activities have started up in the Kansas City metro area. But at KC SourceLink, we're not all that interested in activity and programs. We're really interested in measurable results. And so we took it upon ourselves to take those six imperatives and try to put metrics around them. And so that's what I really want to tell you about today. So, Vanna, uh, we are making progress for moving the needle. Uh, when we started this, um, that original research report showed that we were only strong in the area of connected resources. Uh, since then, we have begun to see a change. Uh, awareness is actually moving up, and, and that is perceived as being strong now, so that we're becoming known. If you look at uh, how other people in other parts of the country are recognizing Kansas City, they're starting to say, yes, that, there's something going on there. There's something happening. The other thing we're very proud of is where we're co going with network capital. That was seen as very weak. I'm sure you guys have all seen the stories about, you know, there's no capital, there's no 
access to capital for entrepreneurs, early stage business owners, where do they go for capital? Um, when I say we, I mean we in a very large sense, not Casey Sourcelink, but any number of people and organizations have been working on this. And in capital in particular, we have begun to see that move up. And I've got a really great slide to show you on that. So let me take each of these one by one and tell you kind of where we are. So in the connections and resources, that was already seen as strong. In 2013, we had um, a network of 190 different resources in our Casey Sourcelink network. Uh, Today, that's 230 plus, and that continues to grow. So those are all different kinds of resources that can help all different kinds of entrepreneurs at all different stages with whatever kind of help they need. So we're that sort of triage, you know, switching center. People come to us and say, I need help with this, I need help with this, and we're able to get them to sort of that right resource at the right time. We've also seen a tremendous increase in our uh, web traffic. So from 2013, we had about 100,000. Now that's about doubled. Next. Uh, I think I mentioned telling the story, you know, you didn't see a lot about Kansas City and entrepreneurship um, in the national press, and now we're being ranked as the top ten this and the top one that and the top three that, and, and it's all great news, and it's great for Kansas City. It, it positions us not just um, as a place for entrepreneurs, but the, the really interesting thing to me is that it's also um, when Cerner and Sprint and folks like that are trying to recruit, it makes us sound like a cool place, and so that's, that's a real benefit as well. Um, but here's the slide I'm most proud of. So, you know, we put out the We Create Capital report in 2015. I'm sure you guys have seen this. And we really tried to lay out in, in lots of numbers, you know, what was going on um, in terms of access to capital for early stage entrepreneurs, both on the debt and equity side. And at that time, we were looking at just how, what was the pool of capital available. And we tried to look around and see, okay, what kind of funds are available? What kind of grant programs are available? How much is in the angel fund? And in 2013, we were only able to identify about 65 million. We've been continuing to track those pools of capital, and right now uh, we're at um, 752 billion. So, so 65 billion to 752 billion. So, see, don't you love that hockey stick? Um, that that <laughs> includes. Um, now, again, this is available. So remember, the entrepreneurs have to put together a really killer business plan and they have to convince the investors to invest. But the, the, the um, complaint that there is no capital, um, I'm, I'm not listening to that as much anymore because the reality is there, there is money. Um, now what we need to do is make sure our entrepreneurs are, are poised to access that kind of capital. This uh, total includes um, grant programs like Digital Sandbox and Launch KC, which you guys are very familiar with. Uh, it includes um, angel funds, it includes um, some uh, Kansas City-based equity funds like Flyover Capital and our new uh, Firebrand Ventures. And also, there have been any number recently of out-of-town venture funds who have raised their hands and say, we think something exciting is going on in Kansas City, we want in on it. So um, somebody like um, Dundee out of Omaha actually has a dedicated person who is working in Kansas City on a regular basis. Um, uh, Royal Street Ventures out of Utah opened an office in Kansas City. Um, we've got Lewis and Clark in St. Louis. We've got Drive Capital out of, uh, I think it's Cincinnati or Columbus. And all are saying, you know, we're really interested in Kansas City as a market. So we think that's showing a lot of pro progress. Not there yet, but happy about the way it's going. Um, we also uh, look at sort of that um, pipeline of innovation. Uh, the Whiteboard to Boardroom program looks at innovations out of 21 different uh, universities, uh, hospitals, and even some corporate like Honeywell, and tries to figure out how do we pull those uh, technologies and innovations out of sort of the research lab and into the marketplace. Um, not just from a licensing standpoint, but can we build an executive team? And uh, I verify, of course, is our big you know poster child around that um, that technology coming out of UMKC Engineering School. So um, you know we say let's how do we find the next Cerner and how do we find the next Garmin? And now we're saying how do we find the next I verify? Um, so continue to work on that. We also continue to track just the STEM talent. Um, how many positions are available, what's the pool of folks who can take those jobs, because next to capital, um, human capital is the next most important thing for um, entrepreneurial firms. Uh, and finally, uh, corporate engagement. And uh, this is an area where uh, we think it's the next area of opportunity. If you want to click to the next slide, when we started the whole capital piece, we did a 70-page report and said, you know, what's going on here? 
and, and what do we know and what do we need to know. And we think for corporate engagement, we probably need to do the same thing. We need to do some primary research. We need to talk to some of the leaders of corporations. We need to talk to procurement people. We need to find out what do they need? How do they want to connect with entrepreneurs? What would be the best place for them to play? Uh, some of them are interested in investing in entrepreneurial companies. Some of them are invest interested in acquisitions and licensing. Some of them are interested in making entrepreneurs be part of their supply chain. So there's any number of different ways that corporations can get involved, and we need to do a lot more digging to find out what does that look like and, and how can we have the most impact there. And so stay tuned, because we'll be probably coming out with a nice big report on that um, to, to be able to kind of identify that. Um, just wanted to, you know, tell you that we'll, we'll, we continue to um, look at the metrics. We continue to track them. We continue to look for gaps in the market and figure out how we can fill them. And then just to close up, I wanted to tell you a couple of kind of fun things that are going to be happening just um, in entrepreneurship. Uh, in the fall is our 10th. Uh, it'll be the 10th anniversary of the Global Entrepreneurship Week. And so <laughs> Kansas City has always had one of the largest um, in the world in terms of activities and events during Global Entrepreneurship Week, and we intend to do this one up really big. We may try to set another um, record. Uh, you were involved in that one, Rick, the last time, so we may try to do that again. Um, networking? Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> this one might be the world's largest co-working. We aren't sure yet, but we're thinking about it. Um, we also just launched something we're calling the AM Shift, and it's an opportunity uh, to bring together entrepreneurs who can connect with each other uh, and network, who can connect to resources, and then uh, we give them a topic to talk about, you know, something that they can use in their day-to-day -day business. We did the first one um, here in uh, Midtown area at Sprint Accelerator. We're doing the second one up uh, in uh, Platte County. And we've got a couple more scheduled for the fall. Um, and then the other one I should just mention is our Multicultural Business Coalition. And that is a group of 31 different organizations who serve multicultural business uh, owners and entrepreneurs, trying to figure out how they can work more effectively together and how they can make those services more uh, accessible and visible to the folks who can uh, use them. And then the last thing is I was asked to give a legislative update, which is not my area of strength, so I'm just going to say two things. <laughs> One, Kansas still has angel tax credits, and that's a good thing. Two, uh, Missouri Technology Corporation, as you guys know, has been a huge supporter of entrepreneurship in the Kansas City region. They not only offer funding directly to entrepreneurs through the IDEA funds, but they also have been a significant funder for our Digital Sandbox program, which is a proof of concept program. They've also been instrumental in Whiteboard to Boardroom, which is that bringing the innovations out of universities into the marketplace. Uh, they funded Launch KC. Uh, the last I saw, their budget was being cut to about 1.2 million from about 20 million. That's going to be a real big hit for us. And so I just um, put that out there again. Legislation is not my strong suit, um, but that's going to be a, a challenge for us. And I heard the governor was in the building today, so maybe we can yeah. corner him and tell him a good story. Anyway, uh, just I left you a few things. You guys probably saw our map. This is a way of um, showing all the different resources that we have. I also gave you a sort of a quick, those were my, you know, where we were, where we are now, and then gave you our last year's copy. This is the We Create report that we do um, every year, and we'll be coming out with our newest one probably in about two weeks, and you will be meeting soon one of our stars who's going to be in that report. So. Okay, did I do that fast enough? Yes, <laughs> awesome. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, we have any questions by the committee so far? Or so comments, but I can oh. save them. It sounds like a few okay. more of the people are going to present. So. Yes, okay, go right ahead. Who's next? Next, Carmen. Can we just present from Yeah, the Carmen DeHart will give us an update on our urban business growth initiative. Okay. Is this our fourth year? Actually, we started August 2013. So yes, we are um, in the midst of our fourth year, right? And right. Um, we're going to be, as you have there in front of you, the report from last complete year, which was 2016, FY 2016. So this report is in regards to the um, 2016, but I also am giving some updates of 2007. Okay. 
Yes, thank you all, um, committee and, and chair, uh, Councilwoman Lohr, for asking us back and continuing to fund the program. We are excited um, to be on, as, as Kate said, on the street level of um, training and counseling and working with these bright young entrepreneurs as well as existing business owners in the Kansas City community. And so our proposal back in 2013 was that it was all about partnership. We were going to put together partners to help support these entrepreneurs because that was part of their vision and their mission and one can't do all things. And so we still look at our partners to help with referral recommendation, support in various ways to work with all of these entrepreneurs and business owners as well. And we thank um, thank all of them for that. John Pager is one of our, our primary supporters. I tell you, he's just the greatest. <laughs> um, also, wanted to just make you aware of what this program is. For some of you that, you know, you hear a lot of programs, you fund a lot of programs. What is it that the Urban Business Growth Initiative does? We actually provide business training as well as business coaching and counseling. <laughs> a lot of that comes all the way from an awareness perspective. Many people find themselves in a situation of joblessness or career change that was um, kind of forced on them, let's say, or they had a passion for entrepreneurship since they could begin to remember, and they just want to understand what does that actually mean? How do I actually manifest some of my mindset into entrepreneurship? And so we have training that starts all the way from that. Many times one of those major hurdles for someone who's new to entry into entrepreneurship and business ownership is certainly credit development. Looking at their own credit, their own budgets in a personal perspective and helping them shore that up, get an awareness as well as education in that is usually one of those major obstacles to move forward. We also have support that helps them then, I have a business idea, I um, want to see if it's feasible for both my personal lifestyle and budget as well as is there a market for it? Will somebody actually drive across town to buy this product or service? And ultimately, am I going to cash flow? Am I going to be able to support a business budget and, and forecast on it? And so we help those folks in that startup stage in feasibility to move forward in a business plan and um, market research and pro financial projections. If it is feasible, if they do move forward, and is, if yes, debt financing or equity um, injection is necessary, depending on what type of business, then we certainly have a team of professionals that support that education and that ongoing coaching as well. And as you'll see later when I show some of the impacts, it really is working um, to bring them that needed investment so that they can move forward and then grow. Um, I spoke with one of our business um, owners at the um, Lincoln Building just the other day, um, Carlos uh, with Cascade Media, as I know you all are probably very familiar with him, and he says, well, what do you have for existing business owners? Everything I hear is for the startups and for the techs and blah, blah, and um, I was happy to say that, yes, your city is investing in you, business owner, existing business owner, and so um, I meet with him actually next week to share with him a lot of the opportunities for growth and expansion. So this is a program that's for all people that are, in, that are Kansas City residents as well as Kansas City business owners. This is for those businesses that exist and want to grow and expand as well. So from August 1, 2015 to July 31, 2016, just what have we been doing with your funding? Well, we've been busy and um, we've Thanks. served, well, we've awarded 92 scholarships. So 92 scholarships went out to take training anywhere from the Kaufman Fast Track New Venture, which is 30 plus hours of training, right? or it was the Kaufman Growth Venture, another 30 plus hours in the classroom. We also do Tech Venture, which is a 30 plus hours in the classroom. We um, have trained folks on winning government contracts, financials, social media, and um, construction business management. So many, many courses, your scholarships, 
award so that folks can take those classes. 92 to be exact, and then we couple that with one-on-one -on -one business coaching and counseling that is leveraged by the small business grant that we receive from the SBTDC. So our SBTDC Small Business and Technology Development Center consultants also provide that one-on-one -on -one business coaching and they served 41 of the um, clients and had, wait, that is wrong information. I noticed that my slides had old information, so I wanted to draw your attention to that, actually. It was 81 clients served and 119 counseling hours last year occurred, and that is correct in your report that you have I here. Was, I was looking at that. The slides are just wonky, yeah. <laughs> but we can easily clean that one up. All right, so then what is that activity? So we call that in our world just activity. It's activity to be educated. It's activity to go through business coaching sessions. But what is the true economic impact that occurred as a result of that business activity? From our entrepreneurs, which you're going to have the privilege of listening to three of them, a lot of activity goes into opening and starting and running a business, right? Absolutely. I'm a second generation business owner myself, and so I totally get all of the activity that's required. But this is the end result we look for, and that is $29 million in increased sales. $4 million in investment, whether that be debt or equity, into those companies. This is just the subset of folks that your funding supported in scholarship. 15 of them did start their businesses. 83 new jobs were started in Kansas City as a result of your funding, and 129 retained jobs, as well as over $3 million in government contracts. What this is telling me is more and more existing businesses are hearing about this program and are taking advantage of the program because of the retained jobs as well as government contracts and sales. Those typically come from existing businesses, not your startups. It takes them time to get traction and their operations up to speed. So current year, so that happened in 2016, currently we're six months into our current year of funding with the city and so far we've served 90 clients. We've counseled 154 counseling hours. What that tells us as well is we have repeat customers. Just because you received a scholarship in 2013 doesn't mean that all, all bets are off. You're not going to receive any more support. No, the SBTDC and PTAC Procurement Technical Assistance Centers continue to work with the UBGI um, awardees and their businesses, and we counsel them and we provide that one-on-one -on -one business coaching as well as additional courses when necessary up to 154 sessions so far in six months, and we've awarded 87 of your 90 scholarships. So we only have three left, but the upside is, again, we give out these scholarships. There are wanted, and um, every year we do have a waiting list for when those scholarships come back in August. And so we're looking forward to probably awarding those last three or more, as you saw, Last year we did 93, the year before 90, or 92, and the year before 93. Many times we find a way to get people in the classroom for you, but um, it will probably be the Fast Track New Venture that's coming up in April. And so as of April, all the scholarships will probably be completed, but we'll start that coaching um, much more seriously. And so these impacts will be collected up through June, July, August, I'm sure will continue to increase as well. Right now, though, even with um, six months in and not doing our collection cycle of impact, you see there's still a significant impact in this year's program. Wanted to show you our graduating class of Tuesday, the construction business management class. There were 12 um, young construction firms that went through this class. It's um, a six-week course. And um, of those 12 young construction firms, 10 of those were scholarshiped by Kansas City through the UBGI program. And you may recognize Prentice Earl. We did, um, he did co-sponsor, so Blue Hills um, Incubator, Construction Incubator, did co-sponsor this program with us, and the training was held there at the incubator. 
so we're thrilled about that. Wanted to give you a quick update of some of the previous year's um, entrepreneurs who have come and presented to this committee in appreciation of your support. This, uh, Luke Wade currently, his business I believe has a contract or award with the city and is supporting some of the city facilities and events and opportunities going forward through the KC crew. And um, Audrey Luna is doing really well with her um, business. So she got her first scholarship, UBGI, to attend the Fast Track um, New Venture. She then went on to be awarded additional training and has continued to grow and expand her studios. Molly Bingman went through uh, UBGI Fast Track New Venture and she moved into her new studio, as you can see, right in the crossroads. 2016, she was announced as the number one fashion design, uh, personal designer in the pitch. So she is receiving accolades here in the Kansas City market as well. And then finally, Joshua Lewis with Uptown Nightlife. He took our Fast Track Tech Venture course funded through UBGI, and he went on to pitch in Digital Sandbox, received funding through Digital Sandbox, as he continued to then develop his app and is making life easier to promote um, the social activity in many of the bars here in Kansas City. So those are just some of the folks who have been here previously and their businesses are still thriving. There's many more, but I don't want to take away any more time um, from our entrepreneurs who have fought the traffic to get here, found a parking spot, and certainly that is just minor compared to the feats that they have done to get themselves started in business and moving forward to success. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Chris Goody. Good. 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 <laughs> Good. Okay. <I'm> sorry. <laughs> All right, hello, thank you for having me. I'm Chris Good, the founder and owner of Ruby Jeans Juicery. We're located at 4001 Broadway in Westport. Um, so I started that business July 25th of 2015 and you know, starting your first brick and mortar business, as you can imagine, you kind of, you're in this hit the ground running kind of state. So we did that and it was very well received by the community and the city um, and as you start to see that, okay, I have a business, you know, this is actually a, a viable business, then you go back and play catch up and say, well, I need to focus on how do I operate this? How do I structure things? Who do I talk to for this? Uh, and that's where the scholarship came into play for me. Uh, I went into Fast Track Growth Venture uh, first with the scholarship, and it was very helpful because oftentimes you're working in your business and you got to take a step back and work on it. And so that's what the, the scholarship and program gave me the ability to do. And in addition to that, you know, you don't have tons of resources as a bootstrap startup company. So to be able to have an advisor such as Jill Hathaway at your disposal and mentoring and accountability and things that you just don't have, you know, not a multi-million dollar well-funded company that you can pay these people to do all these things, that's where the scholarship came into play for me. So now I've transitioned into a very rapidly growing business. We're 20 months in on the 25th of this month, and by July we'll be to five different outlets, uh, one of them being right around the corner at 1111 Main, uh, so I hope you guys come. But Scale Up now, another program, is now where I'm at. So, okay, we've gotten through the, the first part of the weeds, and now we're growing, and we're growing at a rapid rate. And so Scale Up comes into very good play. Other entrepreneurs that are here, H3, being able to collaborate with other successful growing entrepreneurs and companies is, I mean, it's invaluable. Uh, when you're bootstrapping a company and really starting it from the ground up, I'm a passionate guy about my business. My business is all based on passion. It's named after my late grandmother who died at 61 from type two diabetes. Uh, so we're in the health world. And but not from a typical frou-frou kind of standpoint. We attract a lot of converted people that are still, you know, eating McDonald's, eating Burger King, et cetera. Uh, so it's, it's a valuable thing for our community and to have the scholarship and Fast Track and UMKC and Scale Up rally around my business and give me that support I need from legal advice, et cetera, et cetera, it's been, it's been a very, very valuable thing for me. 
Thank you, Chris. It's really awesome. We will find your juicery good. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> like to introduce Bess, and I'm not going to butcher your last Lamori, name. Lamori. Lamori. say it. It's the <laughs> Iowa pronunciation of a French last name. That's what I like to say. So Truck Cuts is what I'm here to talk to you about. It's a mobile barber. If you want, if you're not that sure. Um, it specializes in no-frills, haircuts, bang trims, beard grooming right outside your office. We partner with large corporations to park on-site to offer quick convenience experience that easily fits into your workday. So I just graduated in February from the Fast Track class. So I had the spark of an idea. I, um, I've worked at Hallmark for 12 years. Two weeks before Christmas, I gave my two weeks notice, which was really exciting. And then I had heard about Kaufman Foundation and had friends take the classes offered. And so I started poking around on the website and I found the um, New Ventures class. So I applied and I was a lucky recipient of the Urban Business Growth Initiative Scholarship. So I like to say that I am a UMKC SBTDC UGBI scholarship <laughs> recipient, which is fun. So working at Hallmark, I did all the things that people who work in creative do, um, help launch multi-million dollar brands and partner with um, Shutterfly, Tiny Prince, Walgreens, CVS. I also worked in recruiting for a bit in HR and um, public affairs, so I know a lot about employee engagement and HR benefits. So I was sitting in the crown room at Hallmark. My husband works there. We're having lunch, and he was complaining for the millionth time about having to go get his hair cut. And I'm like, you need a little truck that pulls up here on McGee Circle and <laughs> parks, and you could just run out and get your hair cut. And then I'm like, you need a little truck that comes and parks on McGee Circle and offers a haircut. So um, it was just a spark of an idea, and then through this class, I was able to, you know, critically think about it and vet ideas and research. And I brought my presentation just so you could see how it comes together in the five-week course. We went to the library, and I'm a regular patron of the Kansas City Public Library, but I had no idea at the click of a button. There's a wealth of info. I can research the companies around Kansas City to plot the course and where to park and who to target. Um, and to really focus on how this launches. So initially I thought, oh, we'll go to Garmin and Sprint and Cerner and Hallmark, but to take a truck all around town, that doesn't really make sense. And this class helps you think about it logically and what makes the most sense. So I'm focusing on um, Jackson County and Kansas City Metro. That also helps with my licensing and all of that through the State Board of Cosmetology. I don't cut hair. I don't plan on cutting the hair, so I'm going to hire that talent to do that. And then also thinking about marketing and social media and getting the excitement around it. So hopefully when we launch, we'll have a full schedule of appointments set and we won't just be sitting there twiddling our thumbs and crossing our fingers hoping people show up. And then also the idea of starting small and allowing it to grow. So um, having that plan and then also the profit and loss and balance sheet and stuff that when I worked at Hallmark, I got to focus on my little silo that I was in charge of and other people took care of all that other stuff. So it was really nice to know and learn how all that works and to put all the things in the spreadsheet that it's going to take to run this and then to see at the end of the month I'm not going to be a millionaire doing this. But it's a start and it can grow and I can eventually hopefully have many trucks and many stylists. So I've learned a lot through taking that class and continue um, to use the counseling. Jill Hathaway was my counselor. So um, just having that resource there to be able to continue as this launches. And I put um, fall of 2017, but I think it's going to be sooner. Things are falling into place, and there's nothing stopping me. So <laughs> it's going to happen, which is scary and exciting, but good time to do it. And that's truck cuts. That is awesome. <laughs> Just, here we go. Here. Here we go. Here. Here we go. <laughs> yes. yeah. uh, there's lots of fun hair puns that I think part of marketing will be doing the, the hair and now and here we go and all that fun stuff. So thank you so much. Sure. You'll have to come back next year, Bess, and tell us how, how yes. very, very successful you are. Right. <laughs> Let's go this room. It's fun. <laughs> It's one of those things they say, always be chatting. That's one thing that Rebecca talks about. And it's like, as I talk about this, people are getting really excited. And I think, I hope that it's, it's going to have quite a following. So thank you. Perfect. I think we should have her do a pilot project with City Hall, don't you think? Yes, I can't park around City Hall, though, I've learned. Are, we are you trying to tell me something? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> something tells me we can figure something. Yeah, maybe you can do away we with those restrictions for another day. Anyway, it's a great idea, and we have a whole lot of people in this building. Thank you. Thank you so much. And now we're here for H3 Enterprises. Roy, Reggie, you guys want to come on up? And I'm going to excuse, well, Rick's going to excuse himself. Okay. Great job. Thank you. <laughs> I'm 
Roy Scott, co-founder of H3 Enterprise. And I'm Reggie Gray, uh, co-founder as well. And uh, we're just so excited and honored to be sitting in front of you all today and so appreciative of uh, what you all have done for so many entrepreneurs of Kansas City. So uh, I want to start with what we do. Uh, we produce positive music and educational programming for kids using our original music, Healthy Hip Hop. Um, a little bit of the backstory of that, I'm born and raised here in Kansas City, and as a young man, um, made some bad decisions and was very influenced by gangster rap music. I had my eye-opening moment when my son was around four or five years old and started repeating that music in my car, which was uh, promoting violence, drugs, degrading women, everything I shouldn't be talking about and he shouldn't be listening to. So that inspired me to create healthy hip hop where we take the same urban sound, also the pop culture sound, and place a positive message behind it about education and health and wellness. And we've been successful using this as a learning tool to help kids with literacy, math, and physical education. So we started organically growing the brand and then I met my business partner here, uh, Reggie Gray. And I'm, and I'm just, as y'all can see from the picture, uh, I'm an award-winning children's entertainer, magician, <laughs> juggler, balloon artist, all that good stuff. And I know I'm a little loud, yeah. Okay, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm crazy. But um, at any rate, I'm originally from Baltimore, Maryland. So now calling Kansas City home mm -hmm. is so exciting because this is not only a phenomenal city, but I've been an entrepreneur my whole life. That's all I know. So coming here, and this is the first time, and I'll really tell you in a minute how we came to be a part of all this, but seeing all these services for entrepreneurs is phenomenal, and it's humbling. And to be an African American, to be a minority, I've lived in other cities where minorities are rolling and doing big things. And I came to Kansas City and I said, wow, seems like my folk are a little behind here. Then I joined this. And then I'm meeting phenomenal entrepreneurs, and I'm seeing folk like Chris over here, who's a young guy, and opening up stores, and dreaming, and then my business partner, and so many women, and so many minorities. So I don't want to get off tangent, but I just want to say this is a phenomenal city, and I'm honored to, to call this home. Right. Yeah, and how we got to this uh, program and the scholarship was very interesting. Um, we started the business back in 2013. Um, again, started organically growing the brand. It was really kind of performance heavy. We go to a lot of schools, do engagements. We also uh, had some licensing deals where our content, video content, our music has been used in over 10,000 classrooms to help with academic outcomes. But we were kind of focused on a kid's television show, like a contemporary Sesame Street. And um, in 2015, our company actually had got selected to pitch on season seven of Shark Tank. So. Now, obviously, that was a big deal for us. This is going to be a tipping point for our business. Um, walk the tedious process of paperwork <laughs> for clearances, trademarks. They want to see the tax returns, your you know, uh, fa financial projections. It was like we're going to a VC. So anyway, long story short, walked the whole process, successfully pitched in Culver City, California at the uh, Sony Pictures lot, secured a deal with uh, uh, Mr. Wonderful, Kevin O'Leary, one of the hardest sharks to, to close. And so... This is the tipping point for us. We know once this episode airs, this is going to change the game for us. It's going to be national exposure. Um, filmed in September of 2015. Finally got the call in March of 2016. And it was not the call we wanted. It was uh, Shark Tank saying, hey, you guys did an amazing job, but unfortunately your episode is not going to air. And I hurry up and contacted Mr. Wonderful's team to make sure our deal was still on the table. And without saying too many words, basically our children's programming was competition and it was a conflict of interest, so they blocked our episode from airing. So what that forced us to do as entrepreneurs was we had to make a pivot to launch the ed tech company. And that's when I really wanted to get in the trenches of Kansas City. And that's when I learned about the SBTDC and uh, the different programs they offer. And so this scholarship afforded us to do the new tech venture. And once we started that, then uh, opened up doors and provided us the resources where we learned about Scale Up, which uh, Reggie's currently doing. And I've got accepted into Pipeline Entrepreneurs, which is a, a pretty prestigious program where they, you know, select high growth entrepreneurs and really give you all these resources and assist you with, you know, scaling your business up. So that's why the scholarship was so important for us to grow. And now we're developing a new Sorry, technology, I which is going to allow us to have some exponential growth versus us having to physically go to schools. Now we're uh, getting a, doing a platform 
thanks to Digital Sandbox, is helping us produce this uh, platform, and we're doing a mo mobile app as well to distribute our content in schools that allows educators and students to engage. So, And, and I just want to say real quickly, the place that we're launching this, our goal is the Kansas City, Missouri School District. And all of the schools, all of the students, everything covered. We do have money to raise, of course, but everything covered. So no school's paying any money. And that's before Fantastic. it hits the rest of the world, the rest of the country. That's right. It's going to start home, Kansas wow. City. That's amazing. That is amazing. <laughs> oh, so we're just so uh, blessed and honored uh, for this opportunity. I have friends and networks all over the country, and I brag about <laughs> Kansas City as an entrepreneurial uh, city and destination. Our city has things that L.A. doesn't have, that Charlotte does. It's amazing. So just blown away. And without the city investing and without organizations giving us a chance, we would have, I'm not going to say we would have folded, but we would have had to figure out what's the next route and how are we going to get that help. This has changed the game for us. Wow. Definitely. You guys are amazing. I tell you to to like you said, pivot from from the disappointment of the of the uh, show and come out swinging. I have to hand it to you. I mean, that's that's what it takes to succeed in business and to succeed in life. And and congrats on that. Thank so. you. We can smile about it now. We yeah. were uh, <laughs> when I know, we first got I the know. news. Yeah, I was yeah. curled up. In the fetal position for about I can a week or two. I can only imagine. Well, you know, now you know what the worst is. Yeah. So all, only the best is before you. So. Definitely. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah. Don't, don't don't let these guys leave, Madam Chair. Okay. Uh, without giving their contact information, they they Absolutely. said they do children's entertainment, and yeah. I can vouch. Uh, I don't have uh, any kids, but I've been at many events um, um, from my godchildren to. Uh, folks in the community or over at the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum or wherever. And, I mean, they Here, they, huh? they do quite the show. Uh, you know, magic box tricks and uh, <laughs> uh, rabbits. You and uh, I can't really explain it as good as y'all, but uh, y'all need to make sure you give your information so that it's somebody that's watching and they're looking uh, to, to, for entertainment for their upcoming kid event. Okay. Or everything in Gax is everything at h3tv.com. So yeah. h, the numeral three, tv.com, like television. And, uh, Councilman, we appreciate all of your support you. from the very beginning and the city. We've done the mayor's uh, Rock the Block event, I think, three or four years in a row. They had to do something different this year, and we were booked as well. But we love being a part of all cities' events. We've been a part of the Kansas City Parks and Rec. I mean, we've seen kids grow up there, I think, since we've started. So we're honored to be a part of uh, the phenomenal things this city is doing, and of course, that's, for that's them believing in us. Terrific! I mean, to have something like that in our city is—I mean, I, I would suspect not a lot of cities have that to offer their kids. And you're always wondering what to do with the kids. You know, you've got the parks, you've got the—the the, you know the paid recreation you got out there, but um, just something fun to do. I mean, for, fun for everyone. Absolutely. And, and with an educational twist to it. So that's what. Well, congrats, guys. I wish you all the best of luck, and we'll get you going here. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. I appreciate the fact that my kids can listen to what you're uh, singing and saying in a positive way. So Absolutely. Exactly. Eat right, exercise, say no to drugs, stop bullying. Yeah. That's what oh, we do. There you go. <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> why we held H3 to the end. We <laughs> all three of our entrepreneurs, Truck Cuts, Ruby Jeans Juicery, and H3. Would you? Are there any questions for any of us? Well, I'm kind of proud just to be a part of this process. So uh, anything we can do and any, any way we can help, we want to be there. If this is what we produce, then I'm, yes, I'm a happy I camper. Yes, <laughs> more. Appreciate the, the um, ongoing funding and support uh, investment to back to the city. Um, we could do more with more, but sure. certainly I appreciate everything that you help us with. Well, thank you very much. Um, Councilwoman Hall. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Um, it's not on our computer, so would you be able to provide us your electronic um, presentation today so we can have that? 
let me clean up those two whatever you'd like to do that'd be <laughs> fine yeah thank you very thank much you. and we can right. share we have a couple of colleagues who weren't here today to be able to hear it as well so see it yes yeah, certainly certainly we'll, we'll, we'll post those on uh, Casey Bizcare and then we'll also upload this uh, video to Casey Bizcare's YouTube channel so it can be shared that way okay. oh. Any, any, any other questions? Yeah, I uh, wanted to save and hear the presentation because um, we've got another meeting here in about 45 minutes, so I'm glad we were able to make it through. Uh, but, you know, I can tell you when we started this committee um, some almost five years ago and came up with the 67 recommendations and really tried to figure out how to cut through the red tape, it allowed for us to work extremely um, well to do what we have before us today. And for me, it makes me really proud uh, to, to hear the report. And of course, as we heard the report last year, uh, and then just to get the reports and the numbers, and of course, hear from the business owners that are here today uh, is extremely uh, heartwarming. You know, I know the guys who presented uh, for Mr. Good. Now, I will tell you, I'm a little disappointed, sir, that you did not bring uh, your <laughs> juiceries here uh, because you, you've done that many times before. <laughs> Uh, so my colleagues haven't had a chance to, 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 you know, experience how good it is. But that means that we have to, of course, go to several of your oh, locations yeah. as you are growing. Uh, mm -hmm. And so maybe one time we host something at one of his places or uh, make sure that they're able to experience it. But then, of course, uh, the H3, as I mentioned about uh, just how fun and entertaining they are with the, with young folks. And I remember meeting with Roy and uh, probably some five years ago or so. He came to a holiday party at Earlhead. Yeah, a third district meeting as well. Uh, yeah, so it's, uh, it's good to kind of see a full circle and also growth. And then, of course, here, here we go uh, as marketing in the truck. Yeah. Uh, what, what, what innovation that is. And, you know, I've been down to that Sprint Accelerator uh, several times and had an opportunity to sit in the room uh, with many of those entrepreneurs who are so excited, uh, you take a risk, as we heard today, uh, quitting a job and, you know, knowing that you have, you know, pay, uh, steady payments coming in to do something that you enjoy every day, waking up and pushing and working toward that and ultimately growing your business and also changing the lives of your employees and then the community around you. And that's remarkable. Uh, so it's, it's a pleasure to be able to serve on the committee and sort of watch this uh, kind of unfold and glad that we as a city are able to contribute these dollars to see this type of uh, benefit that is uh, ultimately affecting so many across the country. Um, I can't say what I want to say, but Madam Chair, uh, we received a, an email earlier today, uh, or I believe yesterday, from the EDC office about some other innovative opportunities that will be coming down the pipeline. Wonderful. And once that uh, happens, I think it will be another great addition to our city that allows for spaces uh, that uh, really help cultivate the type of visions and um, dreams and, and, and entrepreneurship a spirit that uh, many of people in our entire city has. And, and, and I'm, I'm excited to be able to announce that very soon. Uh, but in sake of, uh, I guess, not tipping the hat too soon or getting in any trouble legally, I won't say the name of the company, but uh, just speak about it from a broad category. But I think it really kind of goes back to the uh, Sprint Accelerator and the ideas and being able to have a place for people to go, uh, similar to a lot of places that are across the entire country that are housing uh, small business opportunities. But I can tell you, as we've heard already uh, from the guy from Be More, uh, that uh, there is no place that's doing it like Kansas City. And we see it, of course, in our um, convention that we have uh, every fall uh, and the folks who are coming to town. So uh, and, and doing all the great business opportunities that we have here in Kansas City. So thank you guys for coming and spending part of your Big 12 uh, afternoon now with us <laughs> and fighting traffic and been away from your business. Uh, so I guess we'll have to go, uh, you know, buy something now so that we can, you know, say why we were here. But there are also a lot of people that are watching as well. So. Uh, thank you all so much. Thank you, Madam Chair. Sure. Uh, Mr. Asher, I think you've got some dates. and uh, some Yeah, I, I wanted to add two things here to the conversation. One, uh, there's a lot going on. John Pager left early to go up to Woodneath Library. The small business boot camp is going on right now. And um, this uh, 
small business, the, the urban business growth initiative ties into the conversation that we had yesterday at the Neighborhood and Public Safety Committee about our digital equity strategic plan, um, where we're talking about the path to entrepreneurship in that digital equity program. This program will, will go hand in glove in helping those entrepreneurs that, you know, oftentimes start as a home-based business, start through the Ice House program, and then work their way into the program. So there, there's, a, there's a clearly defined path for small business owners and entrepreneurs in Kansas City that uh, can really go from little or no knowledge of small business ownership and entrepreneurship to uh, launching the, the great companies we've seen here today and elsewhere in the report. So, so the UMKC is you know, one of our strongest partners, KC SourceLink. Um, really, we have a historic agreement between the city and UMKC, as I understood that was from Maria, first agreement the city had had on small business creation. So thank you for your ongoing support of, of this program. Um, you want to talk about events? Is that okay? I, uh, yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much, Maria. Uh, Carmen. <laughs> so um, for, for events in the startup community, uh, Forward KC, FWDKC.co is, is really the, the website to go to, and they're on Twitter, at FWDKC. Um, and you can see from the calendar, uh, Hammerspace is a uh, makerspace we have in the city that has an event um, here tonight, 6 to 9, open house. Um, second Friday is always a favorite at um, KC Startup Village, and you know, you're always welcome to attend that. Um, it's at 45th and State Line, and uh, Coding and Cocktails coming up on the 11th at the Nerdery. Coding and cupcakes. cupcakes. You were hopeful for the cocktails, but <laughs> coding and cupcakes, right? <laughs> Showing up uh, at Code Koalas on, on the 11th. So you know, start the day, your early afternoon with cupcakes, and finish off with cocktails <laughs> at the nursery. So always, um, you know, a lot of activity. And this site was um, set up to try to aggregate all of the events and activities happening in Kansas City. So obviously, one of the elements of success in a startup community is to have lots of activities um, and events and and you know we see that uh, through this site so if there's any other great issues, that is great see you there so well small business is alive and well in Kansas City uh, For sure. and you know that's what it continues to be the backbone not only of this city but of this country. So um, we're, we love our entrepreneurship. So uh, is, have you got anything else, Mr. Usher, or is that, that it? Okay, that's about that it. Could, <laughs> anything yeah, else yeah, thank you for you know, this, oh, this you. platform to show what the city is doing. Uh, that's always the question, and what can local government do for small business and this kind of these, these programs we've seen today, the partnerships we have in the community are our sure. are strongest elements. Well, thank you so much for the entire presentation today. It was fabulous. So if there's nothing else to come before this committee, we are adjourned. <laughs>